Lights, camera, action. In a studio where local filmmakers talk to other filmmakers about the inside world of film. Cut. That's not the script. F*** it. We'll fix it in post. Do you wonder how films are produced and what really goes on behind the scenes? Well, stand by. Filmmakers Kevin Mumphrey, Victoria V.A. Jones, and Carson Hype Ferguson explain all the details. Right here on F*** It, we will fix it in post podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whenever you are listening, I'm glad, thankful. Look, oh, good lord! Okay. You might need some more water. You no, sure? it ain't water. Here, let me take some. I'm just doing you. a lot of talking. Ugh. Let me let me take some. Turns me the fuck out. Okay. All right. In three, two, one. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whenever you're listening, I thank you for doing so. I am once again Kevin Mumphrey, and this is fuck it. We'll fix it in post. I'm here with my colleagues, Victoria V.A. Jones. What's going on? And Carson Knight Ferguson. You don't do no yeah, no, no more? Huh? You don't do that no more? I mean, hey. You I got can, something I, new? I can change it up. You cool? Yeah. I change it. Look, I went down the last time I did like this this time. What's up? I... <laughs> well, okay. So, just wanted to talk about some, like, current events that's going on uh, within the film industry in Hollywood as and right now, the main thing that is going on is the film Gladiator and Wicked is out. Those are the two box office films going on right now. So which one you think is doing the best? I'm thinking Wicked. Carson, what are you betting on? I, I don't know, because like I heard some people were getting upset at the experience because certain people were going to that, that film and singing along. And then other people, it was like I, I've heard, experience. I've heard that, too. <laughs> So they were just singing along in the theater? They're singing along to the songs yeah. in the theater. Yeah. yeah, like, and the people, they don't want them to sing. They want to hear the movie. Uh, and, like, I guess... Especially that. if you can't sing. Oh, oh you yeah, yeah, that's will a, not ruin this for me. I, like, I get that, but I also would think everyone singing in the theater would kind of create, like, almost like a moment. Oh, you think it's going to be a kumbaya moment? I would think I don't so. Think so. But if they so. can't sing, ain't no kumbaya. And then another, I, I don't want nobody singing in the, in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> My money to come see this movie? So. Even if it is a musical, I don't give a damn. So. I pay my money to come see this movie and your ass behind me singing? Hell, hell, back in the day, if you went to the black theater, you like you better be prepared for the experience you're going to get with that. You're going to get some, oh yeah, that's what you get. Yeah, I mean, are oh, you gonna get some of that? It's the musical that, version. No, of that. it's not. That ain't what that is. That is people in the theater singing. That is not. That is not it, gonna it go well. like a, It becomes like a karaoke movie experience. That's not what it is. <laughs> That's not what it is. If you want them, that means you wait till it come out on streaming. You have a little party at your house, and all y'all right. sing along together. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's what that means. I'm just picturing you at the movie that, hey, bro, nah. No, nah, nah, this ain't this ain't that kind of experience. You do that at home. And from what I heard, in a shower by yourself. Don't do that here. But no, I've heard that too. And they like telling people to be quiet in the theater. Uh, I've heard that. But um, actually, Wicked is doing is beating Gladiator, which I had thought it was going to be Gladiator. No, no, because like too too many people are, are very suspicious uh, in. Um of that that film anyway because how long has passed since the last movie and then that was really built to be a standalone movie anyway so it's like people are they ain't really feeling the remakes like that you know mm -hmm. unless unless it's done with a certain time period and you know the people involved but i think just wicked period the the it has a big following so yeah, yeah. I mean, Bro broadway now, play yeah i i assume that it was going to do way better in the theaters <laughs> when the movie came out, then Gladiators did, just because of the following of it. And people wanted to go see the movie. And it actually, like, it's done $114 million domestically. I mean, Gladiator did, like, $55 million. It basically, like, globally, Gladiator's done 165 And globally, Wicked has done 162 But, I mean, it, domestically, it, Wicked would. But it also... You can bring a lot more people to see Wicked than you would to see Gladiator. You can bring your children, you can bring your grandma. You can bring it could be a whole family thing to see I don't Wicked. Know. 
don't know. Now, I don't think, you know, minute, I think like, so you can literally you know, take some, some You know, some people are going to be like, oh, we got witches in there. So we ain't going to take them to go see no wicked. Well, I, I can see certain people thinking that too. But I mean, it's kind of like, it's PG, isn't it? Or That, right? that means nothing. Yeah, that don't mean nothing, you, sir. That don't mean nothing. Harry Potter came out and that whole debacle about. I stayed so far away from the, the first Deadpool was like PG. Well, yeah, yeah, that one. The latest one definitely wasn't. No, it was actually really wrong. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's yeah, definitely. Oh, it's, it, it, they, they, they purposely, they, they're like, hey, we want this to be rated R, and they, had to, they fought the studios for that. Yeah, oh. Some movies should be rated. It, yes. It's better told is rated R than PG. Yes. That one definitely was. But, like, I don't, because they're saying it's like record break, Wicked, Wicked is having like a wake up record breaking kind of sales as far as um, musicals and like Broadway. Yeah. And it's bro- a good, mu- I mean, it's a good Broadway play. Now, and I've always heard about it, but I'm not necessarily a musical person. So, oh, I love musicals. Put now, me, have you now, have you seen it yet? No. Or are you planning to watch? It? Not to go to the theater. Not just. <laughs> now, is it good to sing it? Hell no! Not to go to no theater. <laughs> yeah, y'all done lost y'all minds if y'all think y'all go. I'm telling you, Kevin. You think, so I'm, does... you think I'm playing? I you can... pay money to go sit in the theater to watch something, and there's people singing behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Look. So which situation would be worse? Because, you know, sometimes you can go to a movie theater at like Wednesday afternoon and it just be you and maybe two or three other people in there. Nobody mm-hmm. needs to be singing. Nobody. So even so it would be worse. if you're there like on a Friday evening and everybody in there singing <laughs> or like a Wednesday afternoon and those two people in the hey, back. Hey, 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 like Keith Sweat said, nobody. <laughs> nobody. He <laughs> said nobody. <laughs> You giving me there's scenarios no, of there's no leeway. To two people. Nobody needs to be singing. No, nobody. Who can sing in the back? Nobody. So, you bet because it's two people. I would make it nothing. I would figure you know it's it's you can it's easier to tune out two people. No, it's not. <laughs> in a theater, if a baby cries, you ain't tuning that out. It's better than a bunch of babies crying. Listen, I mean, listen. I, it's too serious. <laughs> you go to the movie theater for the baby crying experience. Now I'm not saying you're going for it, but I mean, if it, I mean, you can't do nothing about it. If listen, it I was at the theater one time, okay, and I'm not saying it was me, okay. I'm sitting in between. It was a person right here on their phone. And the phone was lit up like a motherfucker, okay. <laughs> the, the the person next to me looks over me to check this person who's on their phone. Huh. I'm like, damn, I'm sitting right here and I'm, it, it was bothering, but it wasn't going to bother me. Like I wasn't going to get in no fight in the middle yeah. of the movie theater. But I'm just saying, you interrupted me by reaching over to me trying to say something to this person. Oh, you know what you just remind me of? So the first time I went to go see Black Panther, the first Black Panther, Okay, I'm in the theater and I, you know, I'm like getting all comfortable with there. I set up. I got my my stuff reclined back. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and do you know these people? I'm not gonna say who they are. <laughs> well, you went to go see Black Panther, so I can just imagine who they were. No, I'm not gonna say who they are. They they try to sneak an adult in under the guise of a child ticket. So what they did is they bought all the seats up to the one. And they thought, oh, ain't nobody going to sit right here in this seat because we got all these other ones. And then, like, uh, somebody else had these over here that are blocked out. So I bought the one lone seat up here because I'm like, yo, I want to sit at the top. Not necessarily at the middle, but kind of at the side so I can get out real quick or whatever. And I'm laid up in this big old dude. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm reclined back. And I'm like, looking at this dude. He's like, hey, you in the wrong seat. And I was like. If this goes bad, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, through, I'm running scenarios in my head. I'm like, I'm like, man, like uh, at best, I'm gonna have to kneecap this dude. <laughs> it, it did, I was, I was like, I was like, uh, I like kind of like you know set up a little bit. I was like, oh, hold up, let me let me check my seat. And I was like, oh, it, what was I say? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, that, that's it. I, I, like I wasn't in the mood. I was trying not to be disrespectful because the dude was big. It was a big dude. <laughs> And then, like already, I'm like in a in a uh, you know, a different. You're sitting, he's standing. It's a disadvantage. 
Well, no, nah, I was kind of like halfway laying down because I had this. I had to see oh, him for the recline back. Yeah, the reclines. Oh and, yeah. And I see him, I'm like, I'm like, ah. so I like, I just go up like just a little bit, not all the way, because you know that could be perceived as a threat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just like, I'm like, oh, what, what's that say? You know, try try not to be like you know sarcastic or anything like that. And he's like, he looks at it, and I, and I point, I, I like just point at the number. <laughs> It, 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 he's like he gets mad at the women for putting him in that situation <laughs> and, and he's like he's like man y'all told me y'all bought a seat and he, he like storms out and then it's like so uh the, the chick comes up to me and she's like she's like uh you're in our seat and i was like no i mean he he, he saw right here i mean look that, that's the number right and then she's like she's like just sitting there looking crazy and then the black lady next to me she ain't making no better. She was like, she's like, yeah, and this is my seat right here, and that's his seat right here. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, lady, lady, you gonna give me the fight? Chill out. I got this. Remember when he said he wasn't gonna say what these people were? <laughs> you said a whole bunch right then and there. We know, we know who they are. Nah, no, nah, it's just the black lady was nice. Lady, black lady. Nah, say the black lady was to my right, not the people, not the people to my left. Like, I didn't say nothing about them, but the black lady, to the left, black lady was was nice. No, she was. She I, she just she was a little overzealous. And her husband was like, "Hey, hey, chill out." And I, and I gave him that look. I said, "I said, thank you, thank you, my brother." <laughs> so, you, so no singing for you neither. Nobody. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. Who can sing in the back? No, but yes. Oh, he's in the same. No. 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 You don't have to say nobody. I almost got it. I almost got it. Oh, so another thing I want to talk about, like, uh, Denzel has been basically on a press tour, which has been going all over TikTok lately. Uh, one of the things he talked about, uh, he was saying that he has not auditioned for a film in 40 years. I mean, like, why should he? Right. I, it's I, Denzel. I mean, and people, people write films with him in mind, and then they have to get somebody else if he's like, nah, I ain't doing that. Or there, and he's at the point where the film's not getting made. Mm-hmm. If he declines, and he and he, I feel like at least in like the last ten, maybe twenty years, he's been a lot more pickier. Yeah, yeah. On his role, he should. He should. But I was thinking, like, what? And I was thinking, like, when was the last role that I would even think he would uh, audition for? It'd probably be none, because you know he's doing a lot of directing and producing too now. So well, it's it's because uh, the piano lesson. It's one of his movies. Yes, because uh, the kids, are, his kids are in. I think his wife is even a part of it. I think so. So it's like I think it's like a family affair type deal. Yeah. So, uh, but I like what other actors you could think of that would you wouldn't even think of having him audition for anything. Probably like well, Angelina people... Jolie, because uh, she just did a movie. Like who? Angelina Jolie. It's a movie coming out on Netflix. She's playing somebody. I saw the previews and I kind of liked it though. Uh, I, I forgot. I forgot. I think it's like an opera singer, a famous opera singer that she's playing. Um, yeah, but all the big ones. And like, uh, was it? Um, there's a video game that came out a while ago. The um, Norman Reedus from um, The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's he's the lead character in it. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he didn't audition for that. It's like, hey, I want a big name person. Let's see if we can attach it to one of these cats or whatever. And then like, hey, let's see what they think about it. And they can get excited about it or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, so you you might you might have them like you know send the script over, but they're probably not auditioning. Yeah, and I would think like the um, actors who like, you would say box off they put the butts in seats. Like, yeah, like um, Chris Hensworth when he did a Netflix deal, you know, with the Indian Film Studio Expedition. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure he wouldn't audition for that. Chris Evans, uh, I, I would say the rock. Chris Chris Evans probably does. Because I don't think he has, like, the same pool as Chris Hemsworth. You don't think Chris ha- Evans has the same pool as Chris Hemsworth? No, no. I would I would think him being um, Captain America, I would think that would have boosted him up. Quite. Yeah, but that's not, like, a... Yeah. Now, it's stuff he's done after, since then. Because I heard the, what's the red one he did? Was it red one or something like he, that? He was in that? With he the was rock? in red with the rock? I think it, red I one. think it was that one because it, it did not do well. Uh, apparently, quite a few of The Rock's latest projects haven't done that well. But 
I think his his biggest problem is like oversaturation. Well, he's doing also um what's it uh Disney movie that's about to come out again? Uh, just because I think he's done something. I think he's done. It's like the second version yes. of it, and yes. he's played that role before. Because I think that's coming out. Because it's probably like for the, the whole Thanksgiving cycle and everything. So yeah, I think, I think so. this week. Uh, so it's actually pretty soon. But it's Disney is animated. It's probably going to do pretty well. Um, but God, who, I was thinking Tom Hanks. Not Tom Hanks now. Well, I mean, like he's probably not auditioning, but Tom Hanks now isn't the draw that he was like even 10 years ago. And that also going to be discussed. He's. Oh, no. Okay, so how about this one? Um, Samuel Jackson. Uh, no, actually, a lot of people have written roles for him for a long time. Like, specifically for him. Yeah. Like that Marsalis Wiley. As a matter of fact, one of my coworkers got that same wallet. How did he get that wallet? In Pulp Fiction? Yeah. He like... just bought it off a website. They sell oh, much. Well, there is a, apparently there is, a, I saw, and this is more so for clothes. There's a website where if there's clothes from a certain movie, you can almost buy it from that site. Or if they don't have it, they'll show you where I was. No, no, like they, they got that. Um, they got the the AR Google tool, or whatever. You can circle the um the product in there. So if it's even if it's a mirror, you can circle it in a in a TV show or you know whatever. Yeah, and it'll give you like a list of stuff. They they've been advertising on the commercials all the time. Cause I just I just started seeing advertisements advertisements on stuff like that maybe a few weeks ago. Oh, that technology's been like in play for a long time now. Like where they've been trying to get it, especially like with like I mean when Gilmore Girls was the thing, mm. they were like they saw women trying to uh, like get some of the outfits or some of the bags or some of the 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 stuff in the background or whatever, and they're like, hey, how can we tie that in? And even stuff like the Office. Like if there was like an easy button or, you know, just because oh, yeah. they, they really want the merchandise tie in. But wasn't like Home Depot doing the easy, selling those easy buttons? Probably. Well, no, Staples. Staples. Staples, Staples yes. Sta- yeah. I get those two confused. Yes. So that, that would make Home sense. Home Depot and Staples. They, I do. They, I do. It's I, a whole bunch of different stuff at Home Depot than it is at Staples. I know. Including, it, the, including the Home Depot girl that Shaq slid in the DM on. Who? You don't remember the the Home Depot girl, the attractive girl that worked at Home Depot? Oh, the she the girl went viral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and then a I bunch of check went in her then, DM. Then a bunch of women started like putting on a uh their Home Depot. Even women that didn't work on there had Home Fits. Depot uh aprons because all this is an apron. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally, you just... can buy them off. You can buy them off uh eBay. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you buy an apron? <laughs> what you gonna wait, do? Wait, wait, wait. You go steal an apron? <laughs> I mean, you ain't seen the videos. Like, hey, f- five finger discount, baby. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, you ain't. Oh, oh, oh. We beneath that. Huh? Mm-mm. Stealing an apron is just ridiculous. Just, just, just buy it. <laughs> it it's, if you're gonna make that, like it, it, it probably don't cost that. They probably give it to you, Dale. What are you talking? They're, about? they're gonna give it to you at Home Depot. You're gonna go up to Home Depot and say, "Hey, can I get an apron?" I'm and it's just gonna. I'm, give I'm it pretty sure you gotta start a conversation first. You know, a conversation you gonna start? Oh, oh, I want to work here. No, no, you'd be like, be like, hey, um, man, um, what, what? In charcoal on sale right now? <laughs> and then let you to go from there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So they gonna, they gonna give you an apron because you want some char. You gonna go pay some for some charcoal. No, you ain't gonna buy charcoal. You start the conversation about charcoal. Now you know how you would what's, get to what's the what's the next what's the next so thing? like look, look I'm telling you I done did it myself to so win a free apron. No, no, not on the apron, but on other things. I mean, like hey, like you know, you talk them up, be nice. You know, I'm not looking for anything, but hey, they give me stuff. I'm like, this is very nice. I don't even want you to thank you. I appreciate you got that. the gift of gab, it sounds like. I don't know what you get. But also, uh, uh, stuff. With free dessert, you know, upgrading this, like upgrading amenities, like all kinds of stuff. You know, I got to do, hey, pe- some people want to talk. You like people. I don't like people. I like. I don't like people's actions a lot of the times. I just don't like people. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I think everybody don't like certain people, <laughs> look, like people's actions all the time. I'd be avoiding 
but conversations <laughs> like the matrix in the mid the and, and and this is the reason why you won't get a free ape because i don't want one okay yeah. also also <laughs> jim Dale was talking about it was kind of went viral jim Dale was talking about like he's got these next film projects lining up and he's well he he framed it as retiring but he was really saying he's going to take he's going to step away from being in front of the camera and do more behind the camera and that became like it became like viral and my first thought like he's he's 70 that's when you retire no no he, for it, because uh Kathy Bates ain't retiring she hasn't now he and um what's the other director my mind just went blank no you oh you said he, director no 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 what's the other director um my mind went blank. What's the one who's in his nineties right now? Um, male. He's a male. Of course, he's a male. New York. Well, well, yeah. Of course, he's New, New York. York. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just done because I think I know. Clint Eastwood. Oh, and he—that's supposed to be his last film. What last film? The film, the last, the project that's supposed to be coming to Daisy Direct is supposed to be his last one. He's directed. Supposed to be. So, but the man, is, the man is in his nineties. Yeah, he's ninety one. Right, and, he's, and, he's, and he said he was retiring early on in his career. Yeah, but I mean, he, he never did. But I mean, the retirement, like in that, you got to have something that moves you, though. Like, like Grant, and, and when he did Gran Torino, that that's like he hadn't did a movie in how many years before that? It was a long time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like over ten years. Yeah, it's been it was a minute. And that's why Denzel was saying he's retired. Like he doesn't see like projects that he's motivated to do anymore. And then it's also, he's more motivated to be a director now. Right. But he's still not retiring from film. That's what I'm talking about. Well, when I say, and I'm not saying he retired from the world, like the film industry, I'm saying he's retired from the acting part of it. And even retired, he just not going to be looking for roles. I have a hard time believing that. I, I really think that, if he says he's going to retire, he might not be a major role, but he's going to be in that film somewhere. You know, because uh, he's going to do a cameo. Like, he's going to do a, something. You can't, Denzel can't do a cameo. He, he can't be a no. He can't be a he. Literally, the, he he was doing the interview and he was joking and he was saying this jokingly, but the guy was asking like, if you could play a leading role in any film ever, what would it be? And he's like, I've played a leading role in all of them, so I don't really he like. Denzel is a leading actor. He just has yeah. that presence. He can't be like what I always thought was the great thing about Samuel Jackson. He can play the starting role. He can play the he can he can play like a side character. He can do cameo. He can play any part. Morgan Freeman can do this too. Denzel can't. He's a leading man. He, he, he's, he, he's gonna overshadow. He, he's gonna overshadow. He's gonna who, overshadow whatever's ever. going on. Would this, just because he's a good actor, but that doesn't mean he's, he's also. Like, yeah, but also, he's the draw as well. Like, yeah. so if you see him, you be like, "Oh, that's Denzel. I know I'm gonna get Denzel." That's Denzel. But like, if, he, if Denzel's on the screen for ten minutes, oh, you gonna talk all kinds of crazy about that film? Ten minutes, or or do like what they did in the other guys, where they uh like the Rock and uh and Samuel Jackson. Like early on, they got like spoiler alert. They uh <laughs> they got rid of their characters, and the other guys. Oh, I never saw it, but I know what you're talking about. Man, but like crazy. they like you literally like Denzel could only be a leading actor. He just has that yeah, he's a great actor. That's a lot of great like um God, what is I always forget this guy's name, but he's like he's considered like one of the greatest actors. Um I can't think of his name, but every time he's in a movie and he could it does it so well that you don't necessarily see him, but his 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 acting is so well, his presence is so great, he's always playing a leading man. Um, someone else who's probably always a leading man. I can't think of anyone who does it like Denzel, but he's too much of a leading man to put him in a supporting character. Maybe. Like I just like, I, like there's a lot of actors that could now, I, and I always put like a Morgan Freeman and Samuel Jack because they're like the two best that I've seen do that. That they can you can put in any role and they don't like. Now Samuel Jackson is definitely a scene stiller. <laughs> but he doesn't necessarily take over like the whole role. Like I can't. You don't think he takes over? No, no, no. no not, I not think he takes over. over a scene. Like, 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 not the, like the best movie. The best example of that is make the reference again with air Pulp Fiction. Like John Travolta, good, 
but the most like notable moments or whatever, the Samuel Jackson deals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he stole some scenes. Like but especially he, in the diner with the, the chick. He's like, no, 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 point the gun at me, B. He he he's always good. And someone else who someone else who's in he's never he always think of him more of a comedy, but as far as acting, but um Bernie Mac. Always still a scene. Yeah. Yeah. Consistent scene still. He's one of those. Um, it's just like when he was in Charlie's Angels. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, and I remember when the first, like, why is Bernie Mac in Charlie's Angels? But then you see, like, oh, it works. Yeah. That's like, what I'm saying. Bernie Mac's a spice that works anywhere, especially if comedy's involved. He works everywhere. Um, I don't know if he would work in an office. You don't think I, so? I think, I think that would be but great. It, it, it would have been awesome. Uh, I would. I don't know because you'd be like, oh I would God. love that. I don't know about that. And, one. and the reason is because of his show, Bernie Mac, and he, he when he was talking to America, just get, just imagine those scenes where he's talking, he's doing his his, his stuff to the camera, and they're having those I, little I can professionals. Even, I can even see the role. Like he's like, I was going to say HR, but it's like he's upper management. He comes in every now and then, and everybody else kind of gets nervous. Like, oh, it would be great. Bernie Mac would kill in that. Oh, he's a he's a hatchet man. Yeah, yeah. that would work. Cause he'd be saying stuff that's not supposed to be funny, and you'd be like just laughing. Then you do that cutaway and just let Bernie be Bernie. Oh, uh, he would be. He he would also be awesome in uh, what's the new one? Uh, Albert Elementary. Albert Elementary. Al- Albert Elementary. Yeah, he would be. He would be good. Oh, like a school, like a superintendent. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would have been perfect. God, that's yeah. The more I'm thinking about, man, we miss Bernie. That. There's so many good stuff he could have been in. Yeah, he would have killed in that. Because um, they had uh, the guy who was on Mad TV play the uh, teacher's father. Yeah. And he, like, did the mannerisms. like the, And they kind of looked similar. Yeah, but yeah. But they did the facial ma- mannerism and everything. Looking at the screen, it was oh, it was great. Yeah, I can't think of anything Bernie. Com- comedy-wise, I can't think of anything Bernie wouldn't be good at. Um, I was going to say. Um, he, he wouldn't work in Seinfeld. It'd just be a clash. Because, like, I think it would just work as, like, like awkward. The only, so, I don't know if it'd be, I don't know. That's an, that's an interesting. Nah, I, bring I, it I, don't, I don't think so. He'd, so he'd be know. like, he would have to always be, like, referencing how weird everybody else is. Well, because, I mean, how many black people was on Seinfeld? And I feel like he would have to bring that. Like, like ain't no well, black people in may, here. What was may, maybe Aisha Taylor? No, she was on Friends. Friends. Yeah, that was Friends. <laughs> they had the same issue because I remember they were. That was Friends. I remember they were like, "So wait, you telling me a show is filmed in New York, and there's no black people in it at all? Not even in the background?" And then I was like, "Wait a minute." No, there was some in the background. That was a. Uh, there was. A, I did say like the first few, I think two or three seasons. Like you wouldn't even see black people in the background. Well, it was it was the most <laughs> white show. Oh. No, nah, but but, but like, like New, New York, New York, like it's like the I, most diverse city in the United well, States. Well, I'm saying I'm saying like the people they would encounter, like they they probably ain't gonna be no black folks in their coffee shop. But I mean, you gonna you gonna have a, a you gonna have an Indian or Asian or something. No, I'm, no, I'm saying not, like, not in that coffee shop. Yeah, not that, uh, that particular coffee shop, <laughs> but. Yeah, no, you, they, you would see they were, none of they were all They were all on In Living Single. They, they, yeah. what, wasn't Living Single in Harlem? <laughs> yeah, I think it was. I think it was based in Harlem. I don't remember for sure. But yeah, they were all in Living Single. The black side of that show <laughs> was in Living Single. You're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. See, I fixed the problem. That's what it was. <laughs> and, 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 say it. and then later on, uh, like all the people were running away on New York Undercover. <laughs> Like right, right after that. Wow! Wow! Man. Wow! Oh, oh no, no, <laughs> too too soon. <laughs> it's not even too soon. It's just how did you get there? No, I, I'm talking about New York shows, no. and every every time like no. I think about New York shows, like that was a they particular went, New York show at the same time Living Single was. No. They wouldn't even shot the same cameras. Like no. I just. <laughs> That is horrible. Uh, another that thing, is horrible. Another thing I want to keep do. running away. <laughs> no, no, can't keep running away. Another thing I wanted to get into. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if y'all heard. Cat Williams is uh, breaking ground on a building a film studio in Alabama. Oh, good on him, man. My first thought was, how much money does this man has? I didn't. 
He's always richer than I think he is. Uh, according to his net worth, he's only like got a million dollars. But like every time I turn around, I hear stories about him giving like you know more than more than yeah. that. Right. Like, like out. Like just he got some stashed away. You know he he. he and I know stashed that away. He's making way more than a million doing those doing those tours because he packs them. It's like where are you getting all this money? Yeah, but he he don't spend money on anything hardly. I mean, he got like what six kids? Yeah, but I'm saying he don't spend money on himself like that. Yeah, so I'm like, me. so I'm like, even you're expensive. You know, they, no, expensive. Hey, 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 don't let don't let Tyrese X like leave <laughs> you man. Like it don't cost that much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it depends on who you had the kids you're, with. You're, you're, okay, your daddy famous. You may be like, but then again, he he was he did have that um that that thing when he was talking about his kids like make a pimp decision. <laughs> Like, remember when I told you make a pimp decision? <laughs> so that that may lead into your point. I'm pretty sure he taught all of them. Like, he needs to make some smart financial decisions because daddy ain't get, ain't paying for all of it. But I also like I was thinking like where where are the other film studios are being built in? Um, I know you heard like Warner Brothers Discovery is supposed to have like an 8.5 billion dollar studio in Las Vegas. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I was waiting for, I was I'm looking at the list and I was like, what is anything else being built in like Los Angeles? And there's supposed to be like one. Why, why would you build in Los Angeles? I mean, that's supposed to be like the Hollywood hub. Yeah, but, but it, it's, it's like the cost, of, the cost of living, the cost of production, like even an independent production is going to cost you like triple what it would cost, yeah. like, you know, just another state over. And that's what they're doing. Well, they're going, a lot of it's going to Canada. Also, um, I never heard of Dublin, Ohio, but they got a studio. I was going to say they've been doing in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, they got the yeah. flights from here to Dublin now. It's far away. <laughs> but there's Canada. You've got more in, in Georgia, Toronto, um, and they, they have Malhat Nations, Canada. And it's like a $242 million studio. But they have one. This is the only one that's probably, there's probably one studio that's being built in San Francisco. And I'm like, if you're gonna build something in California, I, San Francisco is way more is more expensive than Los Angeles, so I don't see why you do it. San maybe Francisco, it's but enough I'm, space up there. May, it may have been a good, you know, to do what they need to do up there. And they're always, I'm always seeing this like they're buying like an like an old military compound. And I'm like, how many of these are vacant that people are able to buy? I mean, that there's uh there's quite a few that got shut down. And that just never got repurposed. Even the old airports, even a regional airport is still like a sizable, you know, kind of, um, you know, footprint. Yeah. So have these been like shut down like what in the last 10, 20 years or? Uh, some of them, some of them the state has to uh, maintain right now. Like, cause what is it? Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Patrick Bad David. No. no. It, like they made their headquarters a valuetainment because he sold his, um, his um, company, sold his company. And uh, when he cashed out, he became a minority owner in the uh, the, um, the Yankees. And then, like, he uh, he basically turned value tame into, like, you know, it, it was already, like, a media yeah. kind of empire deal. But his headquarters are on an old airport in Miami now. Uh, or, or Fort Lauderdale, I think. And it's like they have been working on that sale for, like, why. a number of years. I thought he was in years. Texas. He's in Florida? No, he was for a little bit. But he he decided to go uh, to to Florida. How long ago he's been in Florida? Maybe three years. Oh, maybe, so this maybe, is maybe, maybe this three, is three four three four years, and it was like a, a decision with his kids and all that stuff too. Oh, okay, that make that makes sense. Yeah, so he's like he's like he wanted the best environment to raise his kids in, like schooling, all that good stuff, Ta- taxes, schooling, all that, and his company, because like he's got to think about cost of livings or his employees. That, yeah. that that was a big thing. Because when he had his financial services company or whatever, I actually got approached by a recruiter. A couple of them, actually. Nice. All right. So other, well, I'm going to say other places, but you can, most of these places I'm seeing are down south. There's another one going to Georgia. Um, you know, 50 Cent has one in Shreveport. Shreveport, yes. And which he kind of got caught a lucky break because the tax breaks that caused him to go over there, they were supposed to be doing like a, a vote to either keep them or could they, I guess like the politicians there wanted to cut those tax breaks. So he was like, man, I'm shitting bricks for a minute. But they um, approved the tax breaks, I believe a few days ago. 
So like, yeah, we, we're good. We, we just got green light gang. Like, we're a go. But I was nervous for a little bit because they wanted to, to cut that out. Which I'm I'm surprised that this would happen after he's already announced. Which I think he still would have done it if they cut. It just would have been way more expensive. He probably would have scaled back. It, 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 it wouldn't have been as big. Like he, he kept like the the outline or whatever, but he wouldn't have been able to do as much stuff. And he'd probably be looking at another uh, location as well. And then they don't really care about him. They talk. They trying to figure out what's in their pocket. Well, I'm the, the the like the main point of kind of building these in other places. Like he 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 wants to do what Tyler Perry's done for Atlanta and Shreveport. So if it goes well, the money's going to Shreveport. They gonna get they gonna the whole city should be able to make money off of that. Right. And, 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 not, not unless it, if you talk to Hurricane Chris, it's a different story. I'm, I'm just saying. Well, I, but I'm saying is this song on a commercial or something. When, I mean, at the same time, you have to see what else is going on in that city, in a, in whatever city that is. And if it doesn't benefit them, they're not gonna. Oh, okay, this person has a studio over here. Let's make sure we cut them in. Well, the the biggest thing with Louisiana as a state, anyway, a bunch of people are going there, and it wasn't a tax credit. It was just like, it, it was like you basically get it up front. So it wasn't like, okay, for every dollar you spend, you get X amount of dollars like off or, you know, back, you know, like a, like a rebate or something like that. So it would, it would kind of, it's incentivizing these films and it's not a real, it's not building a real economy. That that's what was one of the major like kind of drawbacks. Cause as soon as like they, they turn to spick it off on the state a few years back before they like kind of brought it back in a different iteration. Yeah. All the films like them to dried up. Wait, when did this happen? Oh, some years back. Because like the last, like the at least in Louisiana, the last film I re- like I remember like it kind of promoting being filmed, and I think it was also some of this was filmed in New Mexico. Was um the last that Wolverine film, that last Wolverine film. I think it was Louisiana and New Mexico is where they shot that at, and that was like the last major thing. You're talking about the old man, old man, old Logan man story? Logan. Okay, yes. all right. I think that's the and it because I think there's some shows they get. That was supposed to be filmed there. Um, some pilots just uh, good. No, um, God, the show with the zombies, The Walking Dead. Yeah, isn't that film? No, was some that of was, that's, Georgia. That's, that's Georgia. Georgia. that's straight up Georgia. Oh, okay, it was like the first three seasons. They were barely out of the city. Oh, I thought it. I don't know why I thought that was filmed. No, it was straight up Louisiana. Georgia. And it, no, New Mexico neither. Not for the Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Maybe, 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 Dead. maybe one of the spinoffs, but I, I, I didn't watch none of those. Okay. Because I'm looking, looking is like these two, is because is Tennessee supposed to be having? Because it's like all over the South where I'm seeing like it's Georgia, obviously Texas. Um, you got you got Shreveport, and yeah, it's supposed to be one in Los Angeles, but it's not like they're building all throughout the South film studios. I mean, it's cheap, cost of living. Where, where in Tennessee are they building one? Uh, I, like I, at least this is something I heard like years ago. I just never heard. It's supposed to be building some something here in Middle Tennessee, and it's supposed to be something in Memphis like a while ago. I just, I, I, like I heard like them, this uh, was like pre-pandemic d- discussing possibly Chattanooga being like one of the sites because of close proximity to Atlanta. Yeah, and then uh, makes sense though. And then yeah. outside of uh outside of uh Nashville, they were like looking like several. You know, investors were looking at like a like a major studio, and they also filmed like um, those reenactment show, like Snapped and all like that stuff. Stuff like that gets filmed out here. They do a lot of editing uh, here. Like what kind of editing? Like you know, like for those shows, the editing for the show. So you like most of like the majority of the editing for that show gets done for those type of shows get done here in Tennessee. I, I just know there there was a lot like. um I don't know why, but um, one of one of the guys that uh, I used to uh, I used to talk to all the time, his son got an editing job working for um, I can't remember, like maybe True TV, I think at the time. Uh, and then they, he was doing like a lot of that stuff, and it was based out of Nashville. Nashville's becoming a new Hollywood. But I mean that that was like a kind of small setup. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't their headquarters, but apparently they had like you know footprint anything you don't have to be because i mean you you can probably do like the music videos here um you know cmt's here you could do i mean that's all i can see that actually there's a lot of 
outside of those types of shows. But those, I mean, the easy to make, the editing format is probably fairly simple compared to like a movie or a TV show. I can see that being done here. I need to see what they're getting paid to do that, actually. I mean, you put an application in. It's, it's expensive. It's hard out here. It's hard out here for a pimp? Man, I, I can't afford to be. Oh. <laughs> it's too, not in this economy. My, the it? type of pimp I would look like a uh, DJ on Hustle and Flow. I'd be that pimp. <laughs> hey, 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 tell, tell me this fell out your pocket, man. So, hey, hey, man, tell me this fell out your pocket. So. That oh my gosh! The, the only times they use Maine in that film, I'm just like, we don't say it that many times, but we might though. No, we don't say there it is, that much. I would say there, you can find a person or two who probably say it that much. In general, it ain't you that don't, many times now. No, no, not that much, not that much at all. Because it at that point it was noticeable. <laughs> oh, like it ain't it noticeable was, for anybody outside the city. Outside the city, y'all hear it, but for a for you to say Maine so much that a Memphian notices it, that's you pretty said bad. It a lot. That's pretty bad. I ain't even gonna lie. To you. you said about ninety four Maine for me to go. Hey, yeah, can but you but, find something else to yeah, say. But, but then again, it's Terrence Howard. You know, he has that 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 kind of wavery tone, kind of in his voice a little bit too. They don't. It's like any anytime he be saying anything out of the ordinary, you be like, oh, what's he got to say? I, but he said that way too much. Like I don't know if they put that many in the script or what. Like or he just felt it. Or he, he just, just felt, felt it. it. So hey, like, yeah, it, look, it, it, it added emphasis, especially <laughs> especially when he beat up Skinny Pimp, Skin, Skinny Mike, yeah. Skinny Mike. It was like he, he used Maine as a period, exclamation, a question mark, everything. I I, I just I, I dude that that scene it, iconic. Say this didn't fall in, in out your pocket, man. I mean, that, hey, skinny man. That that that's not the uh, when um uh when when he's getting arrested. Say you in charge. I'm in charge. I'm in. Say it's way one more. Time. That to me, that was the scene. I'm and, in and charge, it, dude. And then was it what's old boy? I twenty. I twenty snuck him. I was like, look at this dude. He waited for him to get handcuffed, and then he snuck him. I don't remember that part. Yeah, man, like Ludacris' artist, I twenty, he snuck yeah, him. I, he snuck I him. He, he as soon as soon as he got put in handcuffs, he like looked like that. He like went down. He's like looking around. He's like ah. Oh. Got I like I've mentioned this before. I don't know if I have, but there is one scene I'm like an extra in, <laughs> in um, uh, in Hustle and Flow, and it's when um, he Terrence House talking to um Anthony Anderson outside of the skating rink. Oh, I, at uh, Crystal Palace. Yeah, so I snuck into that. <laughs> Well, a lot of people did, uh, oh, apparently. Because oh, I, I know some other people who were like, yeah, we just went out there. And, and I'm just like, oh, shit. And they just, and I think they were like, because I'm like, I don't, I didn't sign no release. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sign nothing. Hey, cigarette and gas money spent. Like, I remember I'm, uh, my uh, my mother was taking me home from work, and she was like, yeah, I think they're filming a movie out there. And I'm like, yeah, I think that's Hustle and Flow. I think so. So she's like, all right, go out and check. I stayed out there for about two hours. I mean, <laughs> so, like, because wasn't I know, I know DJ DJ Paul was in it. Wasn't like a, a bunch of three other three six people like cameoed in it. Probably some of them did. I don't was I, was Project Pat one of them? No, I don't think Pat. I don't think Pat was in that. Uh, yeah. Not not cameo, but like. Behind the scenes or it, uh, like... A, oh, no, no, I'm, no. Three Six, like, they mostly did... The and, right? Yeah, they worked on and a soundtrack. And I don't think it was mostly them. I think they just worked on some songs. I think, um... I don't know. I thought, I thought um... I thought, um, DJ... D, not DJ Paul, but, uh, Juicy J, um, did, uh... Did the executive producing on that soundtrack. Because then they right. won a Grammy for it? They No, they won a Grammy for a song. Because they, um, helped wrote Hard Out Here for a Pimp. But I don't remember who, because I think it was a um, because somebody another I think it's not Skinny Pimp. Um, I don't remember who actually. Let me look that up. You t pro dude, because now you got me thinking. Dude. Kevin is sad. We we from Memphis and we don't know this stuff. I, we ain't got to know everything about Memphis. No, but I'm, I'm like I'm like that. That's not a Memphis uh, stat though. What? I mean, that's a production stat. 
uh, like, you know, that, that I, I don't know if you would like just care about like that. I mean, that's, that's the, that makes it even worse because we're filmmakers. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, I don't, I don't look like at, you I, making it worse. Everything that's in Clarksville, I don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. Jason, so the soundtrack was um, John Singleton, Kevin Lyles, and T.I. Jason Jeter. Oh, well, that's a new fact. I didn't know. I didn't know that. He, I didn't know T.I. was involved in it like this. But yeah, there are the uh, soundtrack features. Al Capone, because that's who I thought executive produced it. Um, mu- music by Al Capone, DJ Paul, Juicy J, and others. A number of people, writers include Al Capone, Lil John. Anthony Dent, Benny, Dada, Tillman, Carlos, Thorman, Doc Jam, JP, I don't know, oh, Keith, Matt, I don't know who these folks is. Oh Lil J, Nick, you know what, we're going to go ahead and end this. <laughs> no, but who, who's, who, who exactly produced it, though? T.I., John Singleton, Kevin Lyles. Okay. There you go. And on that note, thank you all for watching and listening with us today. I'm us here once again with my colleagues, Victoria V.A. Jones. It's so hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> with the pinky ring. It's hard out here for a pimp. It's hard to executive to executive produce pimping as well. Mm. Also here with my... Um, but the pimping game over here. <laughs> pimping, pimping, pimping. Also here with my other colleagues, <laughs> Carson Knight Parks. What, what did you mean by that? <laughs> I have nothing. Um, that's a wrap. <laughs> All right. Sure.